Secret Agent X-9 by Dashiell Hammett. Dramatized by Mark Brissenden. Episode 1, Murder Mansion. New York, 1934. Sirens race through the night to a warehouse blaze on the Lower East Side. Sergeant! What in the blazes? You said it, Cap. You ain't gonna believe this. Right. Gun runners in that warehouse got me and three others out of patrol, pinned behind them crates over there. We were goners for sure. Then, this Joe, flashing some fancy government ID, dives in with us. Says he's been tracking this gang for months, grabs our patrol car, and crashes their barricade like he's some kind of one-man army. We follows him in and starts mopping up the gang, till the ammo in the place starts to go off. The Joe tells us to get out. The whole place is going to blow. Then, then he's going after the gang's ringleader. Did he make it? That's the last I saw of him. Could still be in there, for all I know. Sure saved my bacon, though. Meanwhile, in Tony's bar on West 34th and 10th. Ah, busy night, pal. About average. Give me a large bourbon, then a larger one to follow. Hey, about average a night, then. Eh, hey, coming up. How did we ever endure prohibition, Tony? Hey, we didn't. Now, go home, you bum. Hot tub and uh, some shut eyes, what you need. <laughs> How'd you like to adopt me, Tony? Oh, go on, a scram. All right, let a guy get through the door, can't you? Yes. Hello. My name is Tartan Powers, and... I don't care if you're President Roosevelt himself. This is a private apartment. How did you get this number? What? Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. It was given to me by a close personal friend of yours. Uh-huh. Carry on. You know of me, then? Sure. The industrialist. Powers Engineering. Powering the nation to a bright new deal. I read it on the billboards in Times Square. Good. Now, I need your help, sir. I'm in desperate trouble. You wouldn't have given my number if you weren't. Don't say any more now. Look for me in an hour. Your state's out Oakhurst way, right? Yes. Cross over the George Washington Bridge into New Jersey and... I'll find it. Damn this fog. Look for me in an hour, but don't expect to see me. Huh? You want overtaking this? Come on, then. It's your funeral. Jeez. <laughs> Better make this jump good. Is it, is it we got him, Luke? Uh, the car turned over, but I guess we better check it. Come on. See anything? Come on, guys. A little further down. Let's see some faces. Careful, Matthew. He might still be in the car. Yeah, but we got us a solid way of finding out. <laughs> you ready? Always. Let him have it. You know what? What? <laughs> I think we got him. <laughs> no, but you just ruined a perfectly good 1934 package. <laughs> Hey, right there! By, by those bushes! Oh, yeah, I'm here! You idiot, back in the car, quick! <laughs> Bye, boys. Thanks for letting me know there's someone in the Powers Mansion who doesn't want me to make my meet with the old man. Which I'm now going to have to make on foot. Thanks again, boys. Good evening, sir. Not from where I'm standing, it isn't. Move aside. Of course, sir. 
You're expected. Now that much I know. May I take your coat, sir? Yeah, here. Now try and dry it out a little, will you? The hat, too. Who are you? You phoned about a close personal friend of yours? Where have you been? I expected you hours ago. I had a little car trouble. Oh, come into the library. I have a fire in there. You can dry off. Thank you, Anderson. That will be all. Sir? Trouble with the staff? What? You always carry a gun when you talk to the butler? Don't be ridiculous, sir. How was I to know who you were? We've never met, and I'm old. Too old and too afraid to take chances. Then why don't you calm down and tell me what this is all about? Frankly, Mr... Uh, Call me Dexter. It's not my name, but it'll do. Well, sir, I'm caught in a trap of my own design. I'm being blackmailed over a business deal I conducted some years past. Uh-huh. I'm listening. Are you familiar with an underworld character known only as the Top? Ah... Uh. So that's why I was called into this. You know this person? If I did, whoever it was would be dead. You might say it was personal as well as professional, but that's a score I'll settle when the time comes. Tell me what you know. Well, sir, before Powers Engineering was the force it is today, my brother and I... Quiet. But I... Don't say another word till I... <laughs> Join us. You might miss something listening through closed doors. No... Please. Spit it out, sister. What's your game? Dexter, there's no need. This is my niece, Evelyn. She's lived here ever since my brother died. Disappeared. Presumed dead. Then why did you say died? Because it was 12 years ago. You were just a child at the time. And we're not having this argument again. Now say hello to Dexter. He's come here to help. Pleased to meet you, I suppose. Uh -huh. That's pretty unusual in my line of work when they've just fallen through the door with a gun in their hand. Oh, this. I'm sorry. I was afraid you might be a burglar or something. Or something? Yeah, I'm flattered. Mind if I take the piece now? Oh, here. Thank you. Mr. Powers, I was attacked on my way here tonight. A couple of characters calling themselves Matthew and Luke. I couldn't tell too well in the dark, but I could have sworn they looked like twins. Mean anything? Not to me, I'm afraid, no. Who else apart from you knew I was coming here? Why? Oh, Uncle! He's been shot! That's impossible. The doors are shut. None of the windows are broken. There's nowhere that shot could have come from. Uncle, please! You! You were facing me at the time. You must have seen something. But I didn't. Oh, let go! You're hurting me! If you're hiding anything, listen to me. The top is after your uncle. And I've been after the top longer than you've been out of junior high. And I'll roll right over anyone who tries to stop me. Anyone. Let me go. Stop. He's alive. Uncle. Oh, hundreds of lives must save them. Must save them. What's happening, sir? We heard a shot. We? Myself and Mrs. Briggs here. She's the housekeeper. Uncle's being shot. Quickly, get Dr. Minson. Call the police while you're doing it. I'll go. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Briggs. Anderson, help Miss Powers with her uncle. Do what you can to stop the bleeding. Really? What does a body have to do to get a little quiet around here? Mr. Powers has been shot, madam. How very careless of him. And is this the man who shot him? No, he's a friend of Uncle's. He's helping him out with his business affairs. Oh, a private detective. You could say that. Oh, your husband's been shot and you don't care. Husband? Of course. I'm Mrs. Grace Powers. <laughs> Uh, gold. Uh, hundreds of lives. It's all right, Uncle. Dr. Minson will be here soon. She's right, Mrs. Powers. I can't say I'm moved by your concern. Then I always heard redheads play rough. But he's in the best hands in dear sweet Evelyn. If he dies, her meal ticket goes with him. He only keeps her around out of some pathetic loyalty to his brother Alden. That's not true. You never loved my uncle. Do you think you fooled him for a minute? Don't be so sure I'll be the one to pack. Cut it out, both of you. Or you each take a slap. You wouldn't. Why, I do believe you would. Believe it. Miss Power, as soon as this Doc Minton arrives, have him help you get your uncle to his room. And don't let him out of your sight until the police arrive. It must be here somewhere. That sounds like them now, sir. Yeah. We'll make a detective out of you yet, Anderson. Let's go show him in. Evening, Anderson. 
Captain Brady, sir. Yeah, got our call said Tarleton been shot. That right? Come in, Captain. It's through here in the library. Uh, thanks, Anderson. Uh-huh. I didn't hear you say. So where's the old man now? We moved him to his bed. The doc's with him. Where are the rest of your men? Well, I, I got one out back and out front, too, and... Uh, hey, who are you to be asking me questions? Sure, my ID. Jeez. I heard of you guys, uh... Never met one. Now you have. Okay, fella. It's your party. You want to run it by me? Dalton Powers was gunned down right here in the library. Trouble is, I was facing the only door. His niece was facing him. No windows were broken, and there's no way anyone could have remained hidden in here. But that's impossible. Right, but it happened. I've got Powers lying upstairs to prove it. First thing we're going to do is take this room apart, book by book, if we have to. Uh, I ain't got no warrant for a full search yet. I'd better get Mrs. Powers okay. You've got my okay. Besides, the lady of the house had to go lie down in her room. It's a strain, don't you know? Make it a large martini, Alfred, darling. Hold the vermouth. A neat gin it is. Now, really, I feel I should leave. Oh, stop squirming. Really, Alfred, a little thing like a shooting and you go all to pieces. No one knows you're here, and even if they do find you. So I have a lover. Big deal. But all this violence, my reputation. <laughs> what reputation? <laughs> Alfred Hall, society sponger, thinks he has a reputation. <laughs> Very well, go. I'll just let this Dexter person do what Dexter people do. And who knows? Maybe he'll feel like comforting the grief-stricken wifey a little later. Do you really care so little for me? Frankly, yes. <laughs> Come on, it's got to be hidden along one of these bookshelves somewhere. So you say, but that pile of books on the floor just keeps growing. I got it. I knew there had to be a panel in back of one of them. Let me see that. Here, see? This piece of wood on the shelf slides open. <laughs> I'm okay. It missed me. Come on, then. Quick. The other room. What? Empty. We would have seen anybody. Sure. Think about it, Brady. The opening the shot came through should be in this wall about here. And there's the gun. Rigged up to go off when the panel of the library was discovered. So whoever rigged it must have fired the first shot at Powers. You know, Brady, that's the first thing you've said that makes me think you're worth that captain's badge. <laughs> hey. Save it. But when Powers was shot, not one of us had been near the panel. Of course. Someone fired the first shot, then left the gun with this lever across the trigger, primed and waiting for the panel to be found. Okay, Mr. G-Man and then some. We now know how. Any idea who? It's a cinch the top ordered it. The who? Never mind. Our one hope is Tarleton Powers pulling round. He was trying to tell me something. That's coming from upstairs. Follow me. The door. It won't open, sir. Out of the way, Anderson. Coming through. Oh, oh, thank God. Brady, check Powers. I'll untie the dock. Right. Oh. Uh, oh, he's good and dead this time. So, it's murder one. What happened, Doc? Where's Evelyn? Huh? He's gone? Well, I don't know. I was leaning over Tarleton, and then it all went black. I, I came to and started yelling. Just great. Murder one, now a kidnap. This warms things up pretty good. Hey. What is it? Something about the rope they tied the Doc with. Yeah, never mind. Could be nothing. But wait a minute. Now what? Uh, a hair clip, right by the doc's foot. Good job one of us has got his eyes open. Brady, you better check on your man out back. I don't need to be told that. Good. When it's done, join me in the main lounge. I'm getting this whole crowd together. Whoever it was had inside help, and I think he's still in the house. Would you like me to fix coffee and sandwiches for everyone, Mrs. Powers? Thank you, Mrs. Briggs. I'm Nothing. Nothing. This isn't a late-night supper party I've called here. You'll not be needing me, then. I didn't say that. Everybody stays put till I say different. Really, Mr. Dexter, haven't we all been kept up long enough? What is it now, Sherrod? Well, happy families is out. No luck, Dexter. My man was not cold, too. He was just coming around when I got to him. Footprints suggest two men. There was a smaller set, too. Maybe a woman's. That could be Evelyn Powers. Damn, I should have been ready for a second try. But if outside help came tonight, 
then they were told to come by someone in this room. <laughs> How ridiculous. Really? Somebody killed your husband tonight, but it took him two goes to get it right. Whoever fired that first shot is either here now or took out without knowing if Powers was dead. And you suspect one of us? Well, you it ain't, Doc. Never I known a man to be able to clunk himself backside of the head, then once out cold, tie himself up. Even a flat foot like Brady could work that one out. Keep riding me, Buster. Keep riding me. Anderson's out because the door to Powers' room was wedged shut with a chair and not locked. Anderson would have a key. Of course, sir. I have a master set for every lock in the house. Right. And there's no way he could wedge a door on one side and then be on the other trying to break in. No one could. Which lets Mrs. Powers out, too. That and the fact she had Anderson bring a bottle of the Krug 1919 to her room shortly before. Good choice, but a bad time to celebrate. It was for my nerves. Lady, you got plenty of them. And how about Evelyn? You're only assuming she's been kidnapped. Oh, that's a ridiculous notion. And you know it, Mrs. Powers. But either way, it gets her out of your hair pretty nicely with her uncle's estate to carve up. I'm not sure I'm concerned about her whereabouts. I'll just bet you are. But what it leaves us is Mrs. Briggs. Yes? Oh, you'd like some drinks served now? She was on the wrong side of the door, too, if that's what you're getting at. Nice going, detective. Maybe. What'd you do after you called the police, Mrs. Briggs? I went back to the kitchen. Thought it'd do best to keep out of the way. Until Anderson came down for Mrs. Powers' order. Then you went up there yourself, blackjacked Dr. Minton, overpowered Evelyn before letting more of the topsmen in to finish off Powers and kidnap the girl. That just left you to tie up Dr. Minton and have the tops men wedge the door behind you before Anderson came back. That's not true. Not a word of it. There is no way Mrs. Briggs would have the strength to do all of that. That's because Mrs. Briggs is a man. Don't move, Mrs. Z. Baldy uh, Carson, if I remember my mug shots right. Uh, I don't know you. Didn't say you did. But how did you know? I didn't. I played a hunch and guessed right. It was a rope used to bind Doc Minton. It was more of a twine, like the kind you'd use to truss up a chicken or a turkey. And it had been cut with a blade that had a serrated edge. Not a flick knife or dagger, the sort of thing you expect a cook to carry, but more the kind of knife you'd get in a kitchen. Then this clinched it. The hair clip, sure. But that had a point to Miss Evelyn. Nah. She was wearing her hair down tonight. It had to be Baldy Briggs here. Hair like he was wearing wouldn't need clips, but you would if it was keeping it on. One thing I didn't know till now is you throwing in your lot with the top. So, a guy's got a right to earn some dough, don't he? I did what you said, but I didn't shoot no one. That ain't me. But we'll put you in the frame for it all the same if you don't tell us what you know about the top. I swear, I ain't never seen this top character. That stuff! Stop! Oh, hey, 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 quit hitting me. What are you, plain clothes? Could be. But I'm also the guy that's going to ring you dry for dope on the top. Now, start talking or stand up for another slap. That's enough, Dexter. Your ID's pretty fancy, but I ain't allowing that on my beast. Just murder and blackmail? You can cut the smart patter. He's coming down the station for questioning. <sighs> okay, but get him his own clothes first. I don't know whether to laugh or ask him for another slice of pie in that getup. <laughs> Meanwhile, off the New England coast, a small motorboat closed in on its prey. That the boat were taken over. Patience, Brother Jew. The Yacht Sea Girl is our destination. You two keep quiet and let Deacon deliver the top sermon. Cut the engine, Brother Bartholomew. You got it, Deacon. Ahoy there, brethren of the Sea Girl. Pilgrims wishing to come aboard. What do you want? A missive for your captain, brother. Okay, come on up. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. You said you had a message for me. A letter, brother, from the yacht's owner. Captain Shaw, please be so good as to place yourself in the yacht's sea girl under the command of the bearer of this letter. Obey his orders as you would mine. Regards, Tarleton Powers. Very well. Um, how can I help you, Mr. Uh, they call me Deacon. My disciples and I should like to visit the radio room. Oh, this way, gentlemen. Evening, Captain. Evening, Bob. Now, don't get up. These gents want to send a message. Quite the opposite, Captain. Gotcha, Deacon. What? Our transmitter. What are you... Well, it's Cap. 
or the operator gets it too. That's just to make sure we're not disturbed during our wanderings, brother. Now have your operator play this recording back for us. I'm sure it will make things clearer for you. Put it on, Bob. Permit me to introduce myself. They call me the top. If you are listening to this wire as per my instructions, Deacon, my congratulations on completing the first part of the plan. You will now proceed to Harper's Landing on the Connecticut coast. There you will take on board a further complement of my disciples in crime, along with some additional supplies for the task ahead of you. Further instructions will await. That is all. Deacon, you will now destroy this wire. All right, Captain. You heard the orders. Get this scow underway. What? Yeah, it will be your new home for a while, Carlton. Welcome to the O'Case Police Department. Tom Brady, the quicker we get him to the interview room, the better. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, this is Birdy Carlson, no? It is. And who might you be? Oh, pardon your excuse. I am Captain Pickle of the Paris Police Force. Uh, forget the evening dress. Uh, I was on my way to dinner when I heard. Pretty fancy cane, too. Or is that the latest fashion in billy clubs now? Most droll, monsieur. But I am after this castle in connection with the European kidnapping ring. What? I ain't never been no further than Chicago. You are a liar, monsieur. I have information that places you as the inside man on at least half a dozen jobs on the continent. You're crazy. And quit poking me with that cane. I ain't some dumb mutt. Uh, how did you know we had him, Captain? Oh, as I explained to your desk sergeant here, uh, I was attuned into your police broadcast. Well, that's true, Cap. He checks out so far. Okay. Tag along if you want. No. But remember... This is my prison and my interrogation. Hey, what about me? This is crazy. Don't forget to pin the Valentine's Day massacre on me. I confess. Can it, Baldy? We got a bare interview room and a lot of questions for you. Come on. <laughs> All right, now listen, Carson. I'm going to give you one chance to level with me. Did you shoot Tarleton Powers? I told you. I dressed up in women's clothes because that was the only way I could get a job. There's a depression, remember? Too bad you don't have better legs. You could have gone for the chorus in the Ziegfeld Files. Yeah, some funny. Now cheer me up and tell me what you know about the top. About as much as I know about housekeeping. <laughs> Far as I'm concerned, all I got is a murder kidnap on my hands. This top stuff's getting us nowhere. <laughs> Perhaps uh, I can be of some assistance. Hey! This is a frame of I don't know nothing about a kidnap ring. And I don't care. I got connections that'll fix you up for conspiracy to assassinate the president if I don't get what I want. Hey, Brady, you're gonna let him threaten me like that? Let's put it this way, cousin. It's either him or me. Your choice. Uh, okay. Okay. I tell you what I know. It ain't much, but... Oh, jeez. Has anybody got a cigarette? I have one of mine. Thanks. See how reasonable I can be when you cooperate? Uh -huh. Sure. I was the inside guy on this job, but the top never tells you more than you... <laughs> more than... <laughs> I... What is it, Carson? What's wrong? No! Hey! Oh! Quick! Oh. Relax! What kind of trick is this? Ah, it's no trick, Brady. He's dead. Huh? Maybe, uh, maybe he had some kind of capsule in his mouth. Wouldn't put it past the Thompson to be that ready. Pardon? But it strikes me that the problem did not occur until he started to smoke your cigarette. You got a point there, Frenchie. What do you say, Dexter? What? You're saying this is my work? I spent a night trying to squeeze the information out of him, then bump him off the man he's about to spill it? Wise up, Brady. All I say, my head's spinning with tops, and government Joes who act like private dicks, and foreign cops spouting kidnap rings. First thing, that butt goes down the lab, and you two are sitting tight till I get a result. <laughs> if you insist, Captain. No go, Brady. I got another plan. And I won't be to... Hey, don't touch your gun, Brady. I could pop you and get away with a reprimand. And you're one of the good guys? I can't prove a thing right now, but I'm as guilty of this as Captain Pico is French. 
Check it all out, Brady. Not just a cigarette. I ain't saying you are guilty, but nobody points a gun at me in my own station. Can't be helped, Brady. There's a girl kidnapped, and the top's behind it. So that's where I'm going to be. Get away from that window, Frenchie. You're blocking my exit. So long, gents. Keep up if you can. Quick, he has dropped him to the alley. Your gun. You can still stop him. Stop him. With two murders and a kidnapping in one night? I hope I never see him again. In the first episode of Secret Agent X-9 by Dashiell Hammett, dramatized by Mark Brissenden, X-9 was played by Stuart Milligan. Grace Powers by Connie Booth. Evelyn Powers, Rachel Power. Alfred Hall, William Hootkins. Carlton Powers, Bruce McGuire. Deacon, Peter Marinka. Captain Brady, John Garasio. Baldy Carson, Clive Rowe. Captain Shaw, Michael John Periati. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Technical presentation was by Peter Novis, Roz Mason, and Jane Napier. Secret Agent X-9 was directed by Chris Wallace.